Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. We have already seen the UART communication protocol in the last videos. This time we will see the basics of I2C communication protocol. We'll see the different modes of I2C and hardware implementation of I2C bus. So let's go for a ride. I2C is a type of synchronous communication protocol. It is also known as two-wire communication protocol. It was invented by Philips. I2C stands for Inter-Integrated Circuits. It is a bus topology based protocol mainly used for communication between various ICs connected on the same PCB unlike communication between components which are plus several meters apart as we have seen in the RS-232 UART communication. The two wires which are connecting the devices are SDA that is data line and SCL that is clock line. The SDA line sends the data to other devices and SCL is responsible for synchronization. If you look at the analogy of synchronous communication Akshay was throwing boxes towards Parag. While throwing every box, he used to notify Parag that he threw the boxes to get the synchronization between both of them. And that's how a clock signal on the clock line works. I2C is a multi-master communication protocol. In an I2C bus, more than two masters can exist and clock is controlled by a master. Only one master can access the bus at a time and there is a bus arbitration in I2C communication protocol which we will discuss later in the next video. I2C is a half duplex communication protocol. Since there is only one line for communication between slave and master to transfer and receive the data. Let's imagine this is a master and all others are slave of this master. Every slave has its own unique name or we can say a slave address. When master wants to talk any of the slaves, first thing he'll do is to address the receiver. That means it will call the receiver. There are different modes of an I2C communication protocol and they are right on your screen. These modes show how fast we can transmit or receive the data over an I2C bus. Based upon these modes, whichever is suitable for a slave device, the programmer will configure the I2C bus. For example, slave 1 supports up to 100 kbps speed, slave 2 supports up to 1 mbps speed, and slave 3 supports up to 3.4 mbps speed. So the bus will be configured for standard mode because all slave devices do support 100 kbps. Generally, select lines are available on the slave IC to configure the slave speed. Every slave and master has an open drain or open collector configuration pin. These are connected to the both SDA and SCL lines which are further connected to a 5V or 3.3V supply line depending upon the VDD of the devices through an external resistor. For now, we'll consider the 5V. When both SDA and SCL lines are at 5V, we can say the I2C bus is idle and there is no data transmission. When the devices need to talk, they pull these SDA lines to the ground which is known as logic level low by turning on this internal FET. When this bus is pulled low by a certain device, then every other device which is present on the bus understands the bus is pulled to ground. And this is zero for the devices. When the internal MOSFETs are turned off, the I2C bus 
again goes to 5 volts or we can say logic level high and this is considered as 1. The resistors which we are using here have high resistance say in kilo ohms. Because of this it becomes possible to connect two or more open drain devices to a single bus. These pull up registers ensure the current is not flowing freely from VDD to ground. So the power consumption in this bus is very low. The value of these registers changes as per I2C modes. Around 2 kilo ohms resistors used for 400 kbps speed and 10k is for lower speed of around 100 kbps. As we increase the speed of transmission, the value of the resistor decreases. So there is a trade-off between speed and power dissipation. Well, that was the basics of I2C communication. We'll look into the frame structure and how the data is transferred or received from the bus later in the next video. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.